Welcome to the last set news, take a top stories in crypto and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. Today, just the thumbnail suggests Ethereum is due for an upgrade. And really what it does is it delays the difficulty bomb. So we're going to take a look at that. We're going to take a look at the data and do a follow-up from uh, Saturday's video when we talked about the different factors that were leading to this uh, little pullback as far as the crypto market. We're going to talk about the Puerto Rico blockchain week. And finally, we'll talk about the IMF urging the Fed to do a couple things, which uh, might be a little bit uh, bearish news. So we'll take a look at all those things. But first, let's take a look at exactly what is going on in the market. So today is just one of those days. Uh, it's Monday and uh, everybody's on the fence. There's a little bit of a, of a bearish tone, as you can see here. We're using Trade the Chain for sentiment analysis. Links in the description, you want to check that out. But uh, total market cap uh, has took quite a beating, 2.23 trillion. We got a Bitcoin price below 50K. Bitcoin daily sentiment is 20 out of 100. Just not looking too... Uh, we'll say positive right now. Uh, is this uh, positive for like the long term the, the, or negative for like the next 10 years? No, we're talking about a, a bearish sentiment for a short term time frame. And that's what I think we all need to make sure that we are fully aware of. So right now, Bitcoin's down, everything's down. What's up? Tether's up. Nobody cares. And uh, let's see what else. Polka dust down. Is anything up? Gee, you know, there was a pretty good uh, movement uh, as far as uh, Terra Luna. I mean, they had a 33% increase for the seven day, but even uh, that darling has to take a little bit of a beating. So that is what we see as far as the markets. Not a great day. And there's reasons for that. We talked about it on Saturday. Uh, the Fed was looking to uh, taper back. Uh, the S&P 500, the different tr traditional markets were uh, getting cut. We took a look at I Evergrande and what was going on as far as like uh, the loan repayment. We also took a look at the jobs report, which was half of what or almost a third of what uh, uh, we thought it would be. So those are economic factors that play into the fact that make people jittery. Traditional markets get, get a little bit nervous. They sort of sell off their position in traditional markets. Unfortunately, they are also in our crypto markets and they sell off as well. Now, if we take a look at what is going on in the markets today, it's not too bad. I mean, as far as like traditional sense, I mean, they're up. S&P 500 is up 0.55%, uh, uh, which is, again, it's huge for them, right? 24% NASDAQ, 0 0.07, 0 0.8, uh, plus 277 points. Russell's up, uh, US, dollar, US dollar index is up, and the Bitcoin index is down. And again, uh, I think it's just that uh, these big players, either they're a little manipulation or they're selling off to cover their positions. And then also, if we take a look at uh, what's going on with Bitcoin, we had uh, quite a uh, precipitous candle drop all the way down. Wow, 42,000. And then, of course, it's just been, been moving sideways. The RSI, we can take a look at this. It's looking pretty, it's in that range of, of oversold and it kind of it jumped back forth. And then we take a look at the MACD. Things have kind of, you know, moved around. But if you want to see uh, some really good TA, go follow Ben Cohen over on uh, Into the Cryptoverse. He's going to talk to you about uh, the 200-day moving average and how we slumped uh, against that and where things could potentially go. I, th I think uh, that for this way, we're going to move sideways until we see some things come to fruition. Also, if we take a look at uh, what's going on as far as like the on-chain analysis, uh, miners, this is from CryptoQuant, uh, the miners aren't selling. You can st still see they're not selling like they were back in January 2021 or way back here in, the, in December 2020. The all exchange reserve is dropping off as, as far as like people who actually put everything back on. This is in the purple. When you see a spike, that means that they're putting Bitcoin back on the exchange. So they can sell like crazy and they take it right back off, whoever they sell to. And then Ethereum just doesn't really even care. They're just like, no, we're going to keep it off because we need it for staking and for gas fees and for DeFi and lockup. So we're going to take it off the exchange as well. So Ethereum actually has been pretty solid, in my opinion, as far as everything else. And the take or buy volume, you can just see right here that if, if it spikes, that means people are propping it up. So they're kind of propping it right here, especially when it jumped down to here around 40, 49,000. There was a big uh, buy. But this is the thing that concerns me the most. Of, of all things that, that we see, it's leverage plays. And when me and Kiyung Su were talking about this, this he's the CEO of CryptoQuant. We did a video together. It's, uh, I'll link it at the very end. He says anything above 0.2 as far as leverage ratio is way, way, way too high. And we can just see it just accumulated in October, November. Before you know it, we're at 0 0.17, 0 0.19. And before you know it, we're all the way up here to 0.21 uh, on 25th of November, then we had a, a dump and then it went up again because people are like, I can do that. And they can, it's all, it's all what you want to do. My goals are not your goals. If you want to leverage play, that's, Hey, 
hey, have at it. But uh, now I'm happy because now it's dropped down to a respectable 0.16 as far as the estimated leverage ratio. And that's really what it comes down to. If we can see these types of things, I know people get ticked off about leveraged uh, plays and whatnot, but really what it does is just resets the market. And if you see a bunch of shorts, uh, people are going to go there like, hmm, there's so many shorts, I should probably uh, do, do, put a long position. If you see a bunch of longs or people are super bullish, they short the like, living tar of it. And they're like, you know what? We're going to make some quick money. And that's what they do. And that's just how the market goes. So it's really up to you to decide how you want to play these things as far as the market goes. And that's just how I how I see it. So um, I asked a question over in uh, Twitterverse, uh, which was, well, now that we have another dip, <laughs> how are you playing this? And I got some pretty good answers. Uh, people are just, some are funny, some are concerned, but mostly it just comes down to the big thing, which was, I'm just looking for the long term. I'm just looking for the long term. And there's a lot of different ways to play it, depending on where you want to be. And uh, just follow me on on Twitter, links in the description. You can see everybody's answers. Pretty good information here. But the big thing, again, is just when in doubt, of course, zoom out. But if, you, if you're a trader, you know, you probably want to take some, some profits along the way. So you have these types of days where you don't freak out. And that's why this is my portfolio. I'm a heavy holder, but there's a part of me that likes to trade a little bit. When these, these we see these gray swan events or even black swan events, if I can have money on the sidelines to purchase not just crypto, but to purchase stocks, to purchase land, to purchase real estate, to put into my businesses, if I can have dry powder, because money does make that actually happen. Uh, if I can do those types of things, then I'm going to buy the dips. I'm going to sell a little bit and I'm going to keep those profits for things that go on. So. And of course, I do a little gambling with uh, NFTs and uh, virtual land. But that's what we have as far as what's going on for the market and the data itself. Let's move on to just real quick. If you're in the Puerto Rico area, maybe you're here already. Uh, there's the uh, Puerto Rico Blockchain Week. I will be there. It's going from uh, Monday through Friday. I got to get takeoff because I got to get this thing done. There's a couple things I wanted to see. One's at 1030. Oh, and I missed this one. Manufacturing Association, the future of blockchain. This one looks good, 1125. Crypto's impact on the everyday lives of Puerto Ricans. And I want to find out, uh, there's a keynote speaker, Hester Pierce uh, from the Federal Reserve. Uh, she's going to be there 2.30 to 3.30 to talk. So I'm going to be down there. If you see me, just say hi. Uh, pretty approachable person. And uh, Puerto Rico blockchain week going on all week. Watch out. All right. So then we got that. Let's go into the big story, which it's a big story. I mean, it's an upgrade, but really it doesn't, uh, it's not fantastic news or anything like that, but it is something that uh, is going on with Ethereum, so I want to cover it. Ethereum update goes live. Here's what's going on. There is this update called the Aero Glacier Network update. The upgrade is designed to change the parameters of the difficulty bomb on the network and push it back several months. This, so... To push it all back, it doesn't affect for a proof of stake. It only affects the proof of work uh, miners, which are what they're doing right now. Right now, Ethereum is trying to is going from proof of work to proof of stake. That will happen sometime in late 2022, potentially 2023. And uh, I applaud the Ethereum network for trying to do this. It's kind of like changing the uh, the engine while you're driving down the highway. It's, I don't know how they do it, but uh, very difficult. And even Vitalik said, I had no idea it was going to be this difficult because of the amount of people that, I, that have to work with to make this actually possible. And um, this is it's difficult, but hey, it's got to be done because those gas fees are ridiculous. So just real quick, the difficulty bomb is designed to significantly increase the difficulty level of the network, which will make miners stop opening new blocks. And because of this upgrade, which is voted on, they're gonna delay that difficulty bomb so they can keep going just the way it's been with their nice high gas fees. But hey, uh, right now, first mover advantage, Ethereum is, uh, is uh, doing that. And we'll see how it all works. I don't uh, see this as a big, big deal right now. It just kind of pushes things back and kicks the can down the road. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Let's move on to our last piece, the IMF. And the IMF, the International Monetary Fund and the Federal Reserve, they're kind of like my, my MVPs, especially when the Federal Reserve starts to print a bunch of money and uh, talks about how inflation is uh, transitory when it <laughs> really isn't. That makes us, that is great news for us because people come in. However, when it's hard to talk about tapering things 
and uh, increasing uh, uh, percentage or interest rates, that's not the greatest thing as far as what's going to spook the traditional market players because then they're going to get spooked and they're going to sell off and they're going to sell off in crypto and it's just a tumbling event. So that's only in the short term, not moderate to, uh, to long term. But that's what we have. So here's what's going on. This was today Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said the central bank could step up its tapering efforts and that this would likely be discussed at a meeting this month. Data released in November showed that the U.S. Consumer Price Index CPI rose 6.2% in October from a year ago, hitting its highest level in 30 years. But the Fed has said market players shouldn't interpret tapering as a sign of an imminent tax hike. I don't know how they're going to be able to do that. And this actually piggybacks off an article from November 3rd. We have known this is going to happen. Fed will start tapering bond purchases later this month. The Federal Reserve on Wednesday said it will start tapering bond purchases later this month. So that was in uh, November, end of November, year around December. Things are right on track. The process will involve a 15 billion monthly reduction from the current 120 billion a month the Fed is currently buying. So here's the thing. As the Fed does these types of things, then the market's like, oh, you're not going to bail us out? The traditional market's like, we're not going to bail us out? Oh, that sucks. Well, now I got to sell some things. And you see, like, we cover the CEO and insiders are, are selling off like crazy. So you've got an uh, inflammatory or inflation, which is going to which is going to keep going up, I believe. Then you have the Fed uh, buying, stop buying these bonds, which is not going to prop up the market. And then you're going to have... Uh, these different factors that could actually swoop in because people get spooked in this situation. And especially if they start to uh, raise the interest rates from super low to just even a point above, it'll crash the whole system. Uh, not the whole system, but it'll make things a little bit difficult, we will say. So I don't think they're going to raise it uh, vastly, but this is an issue. And this is why I'm always talking to everybody about doing two things. If you want to protect yourself because, you know, diversification, I can't tell you what to do, but I'm telling you what I do. What I do is I want to minimize my taxes. And the ways that I do that, of course, is there is this thing called I Trust Capital. And there's a link in the description. And what I do is every year, I put, and I've been doing this for two years now, I, I put uh, post-tax dollars and I purchase crypto in this Roth IRA. And then in, uh, you know, when I want to retire in 60, when, hopefully I can make it this far, uh, 65, then uh, I take everything out and it's tax-free. Peter Thiel did the same thing, made billions, right? And also on top of that, I don't know what's going to happen in the market these days. So like in the traditional sense, people are going to sell off. And then crypto, people are going to sell off. But there is one part that doesn't do that. And that is with like Masterworks, which is the thing that's, that's uh, below me when I'm going into the, the big screen. Masterworks, it's an uncorrelated asset because what you're doing is you're buying fractionalized multi-million pieces of art. Uh, and uh, the people who buy multi-million pieces of art aren't people like you and me. Those are the super rich. So these traditional markets don't really affect them that much. Cryptocurrency markets don't really affect them that much. They're like, I want that Van Gogh. I want that Basquiat. And they will pay whatever it is. And this has been, uh, it's been uncorrelated all the way since the beginning of time. And they've even got data that shows that even the 2008 financial crisis, it didn't really affect them that much because people want these types of paintings. So there is a link in the description. It looks just like this. I did a deep dive series video for each one for iTrust and for Masterwork. So uh, you can watch those to figure out exactly what it is. And just as a reminder, you don't have to use those links. Those are affiliate links. If you cannot stand using affiliate links, just go right to iTrust and sign up or find out what's going on. Go right to Masterworks. But if you go to iTrust without the link, uh, first of all, you don't get $100 worth of, uh, worth of Bitcoin when you sign up. Uh, also, there's uh, no no monthly fees. And then over on Masterworks, just so you know, there's a wait list right now. But since you're viewers of Digital Asset News, you skip the wait list. So totally up to you what you want to do. Uh, that's it for today. So if you, uh, I know it's a little bit uh, short, but a lot of things going on. Uh, I got to get going for that Puerto Rico blockchain thing. And that's it. So if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing for you to talk about our time sensitive. And that's all. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.